Tudor Dixon and Democrat strategist Bill Caruso. Good morning and welcome to both of you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to jump obviously in with the, with the big story, right? The big story is uh, that President Trump uh, being indicted from, by the Department of Justice, Justice Special Counsel Jack Smith. So let's start with what Smith had to say. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. So, um, one set of laws, they apply to everyone. I think, you know, from what I can see, there's a lot of people questioning that. So, Tudor, I'll go to you. What did you think of what the special prosecutor had to say there? Well, it certainly does not apply to everyone, or we would see indictments of Joe Biden, of Hillary Clinton. We could probably go past to all former presidents and take a deep dive into their homes and see if there's anything that we can do here. I mean, think about this. You are talking about 37 felonies for the equivalent of jaywalking. And this is now what we're doing to political opponents in this country. It is incredibly scary when you see that Joe Biden, who Honestly, information that came out about him is devastating to the country, can overshadow that by taking his FBI, DOJ, whatever he, whoever he wants to use at the time to go after a political opponent. That's scary. And, Bill, I'll toss it over to you to see if you agree. But I do want to emphasize one thing that makes this so unique. This was a president of the United States. He had the legal right to see and have this information. The question is whether he had to turn it back or not. So it's unlike a regular citizen that has, or someone that wasn't president, even a secretary of state or a vice president, technically they can't take those documents with them. Uh, many presidents have done this before, but overall, do you agree with Tudor? No, I don't, because I, I think there's some distinct differences right now. I, listen, wherever the investigations go to the vice president, uh, Vice President Pence, where they go for uh, uh, President Biden when he was vice president. We should follow those facts, but let's follow the facts right now. There's a difference. Donald Trump caused this. This isn't just the simple possession. This isn't the simple fact that they found documents. It was an obstruction. It was an active effort on the part of Donald Trump, and for whatever reason, right? Um, he admits on tape, and if you read this indictment, that, you know, he didn't have the power. He, he shared these documents. This is different than uh, the simple fact that there were boxes found in Mike Pence's house or in Joe Biden's house or in Hillary Clinton's server that contained documents. This was an active effort on Donald Trump's part. So there's different facts here. But that's it. I don't think this is the end of the republic. I actually don't think this was a mistake. This may be good for Donald Trump. It may actually help Donald Trump in the polls, and it may clear his name in advance of a primary and certainly a general election. This is not going to unravel our country. The founding fathers built this. There's checks and balances. Uh, many people are saying that this is good for the former president. So let's actually just hear from him, because he has been very vocal about this uh, since it all happened. Here's Donald Trump speaking in Georgia yesterday about the charges. They want to use something called the Espionage Act. Doesn't that sound terrible? Oh, espionage. We got a box. I got a box. The Espionage. The Espionage Act of 1917. I think it was put in there about World War I. Espionage Act. <laughs> Do you think that this is something that he should... is what they should be charging him with? I'll go to both of you on this, but, Tudor, you can go first. Well, to the point of Hillary Clinton not being president, the Secretary of State having a, having world access to her email, having a private private email server, having the Chinese have the ability to find out what the secrets of our state are, of our national security are, I would say that the Espionage Act would probably fit there and not Donald Trump. When we talk about a former president, he has information that he knows is classified, that he can declassify. But you're talking about people who shouldn't have had that information at all. So I would argue that the scary situation is when a vice president takes classified documents that they should not have when a secretary of state has an open email service server that the Chinese can get into. Those are the things that I think are scary. And that's why this is a witch hunt against Donald Trump. 
And, Bill, just briefly as well, you said that you think that these charges are appropriate, but is it espionage? I don't know. And, and the facts are going to show us whether or not they're legitimate in a court of law. I mean, you know, they're going to have, the, the prosecution's going to have to prove a case here on the charges they brought. And I'll say this to you. I disagreed with the Alvin Bragg charges. I think that's a hollow case. I don't necessarily agree here, though. I think there's some there there. But the prosecution has to prove this um, in a court of law. That's, that's our democracy. That's how our justice system works. And we're going to see where this goes. But, um, Bill, I want to go back to you again. Let's put aside whether you like Donald Trump, you don't like Donald Trump. You can't deny whether there's merit or not that it smells political. Again, outsiders sure. looking in. This doesn't sure. look good for the country. And you can argue that maybe technically, and you talk about obstruction, I mean, Hillary Clinton bleach bidding servers and, and, and smashing cell phones was the ultimate form of obstruction. She was under congressional subpoena and nothing happened there. And you know what I argued at the time as a, as a Republican? I said, well, you know what? Maybe in the grand scheme of things, it's better that we don't go after some of these political opponents and it's handled in-house. This is a former president, and many presidents have had issues with documents. It's just not a good look, even if technically he shouldn't have kept the documents as long as he had them. Uh, listen, I agree with you, Michael. And, okay. and by the way, I don't think impeaching President Trump the first time around was a good look either. I, I think we've done a lot of dumb things here. But here we are. But Donald Trump had the ability to roll this back. Donald Trump could have done what Vice President uh, uh, Pence did and what President Biden did and said, here's everything. Come in. Take over. Here, we will give everything back. We're not going to fight you. We're, and what we found out now, and, and again, in an indictment that the prosecution has to prove, is there may have been some activity now where Donald Trump and his associates attempted to obstruct justice. You know, there's an old line, it, 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 it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. That may be what we're looking at here. I'm not, I'm not happy we're here. I don't think this is good for Democrats. I don't think that this may be good for Donald Trump. I don't know. This isn't great for America, but I don't think it's the unraveling of America either. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Bill, you said that these uh, may be good for Trump's numbers here, his poll numbers. I want to actually throw to something about what, what Donald Trump said about the poll numbers. Let's take a listen. As far as the joke of an indictment, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing for this country. I mean, the only good thing about it is it's driven my poll numbers way up. Can you believe this? Way up. All right, so taking a look at these Republican presidential candidates who are currently in the race, who, do, who does the Trump indictment help the most? Bill? Well, I think it's going to help Chris Christie, ironically. A formal federal prosecutor, um, he is in this race literally to take out Trump. Um, he, I think, has a town hall meeting coming up this week. So Chris Christie got a nice wind at his back because I think he's, he's focused on this. But... I don't know that it helps any of these po these potential nominees because I think it's going to embolden Trump. I think his poll the polls he continues to outpoll everyone by a mile, and and it's really going to be formidable for folks to get some oxygen right now because he's going to have the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And Tudor, speaking of the 2024 race, you know, three new GOP contenders entered the races just this week. I want um, to get your reaction. Uh, each of these candidates had chances of winning the Republican nomination, starting with Vice President Mike Pence. What do you think his chances are? I mean, I think these, I, I think that Bill is right about Chris Christie. He is going after Donald Trump. I think Mike Pence sees a, a lane with evangelicals. I think that's a tough lane for him. And I think Governor Burgum is so, somewhat unknown. So that's going to be a challenge. He's going to have to do something to stand out for people to know who he is and find out what he's all about. No, I, I agree. I think a lot of people even on Twitter are asking, you know, who is Doug Burnham? Uh, that's definitely going to be a problem. So we'll give the last word uh, uh, to you over there, Bill. Listen, I, I think they have a lively primary coming up. I, you know, the one thing you can look at the GOP is there's no shortage of people on the bench ready to go. Uh, I think it's a formidable group, but everybody's got to prove something right now that they can do what Donald Trump can't right now. And Donald Trump is winning in the polls on a GOP primary. And, um, you know, I think it more than likely will be the nominee for the Republican Party at this point, regardless of whether there's an indictment pending. And in 10 seconds, Tudor, what do you think about RFK Jr.? Does he have a chance against Biden? 
I think it, as we see Hollywood gather around him, it's become very interesting. We know Hollywood has power. We'll see what happens. But I think a lot of Democrats are starting to wonder what's going on with Joe Biden. We see ads coming out from Newsom. We see Governor Whitmer filing for a federal PAC. Anything could happen. Well, that's true. In politics, I think both sides, that's something we can all agree on. Anything can happen. And in politics, the time from now until the election is literally a lifetime. So, Bill Tudor, thank you so much for joining you, us bye. this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.